Hey folks, welcome back to Suck Less Saturday. I am your host, Neil Widener. I am here with my good friend, Riley Bowman. Thanks for coming, bud. Hey, really appreciate you. it. Appreciate yeah. it. So, hey, uh, we've done a fair amount of Suck Less Saturday stuff. You've watched a few of them. Uh, you and I have never really had to shoot together, but we've been, I feel like we've been friends forever, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, what did you do this weekend? Tell everybody about that a little bit. I just got done shooting the Area 2 Championship, USPSA. Mm, how did you do? Well, we'll find out tomorrow when the final yeah. results are posted. But uh, you know, I did as good as I could do. Yeah, that's the, and, and I, I did I did some things amazing. I did other things less amazing. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I tell you, so these people all know um, that, that. Well, most of them that are watching know that. You know, I, I saw a video of you. It's been a few months ago doing a build drill, mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, oh wow, that guy can shoot fast. You know, and I think I even sent you a message. I'm like, hey, talk to me about this a little bit. We went back and forth, and it really got me down this path. So, frankly, um, if you didn't already know this, most of the Suck Less Saturday is because of you. So, oh, okay. thank you. All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it, no, it's been really fun to, you know, and I, I joke about, you know, and ask, we all joke about, you know, chasing Riley Bowman because you're a really good shooter, and it's very uh, motivating to watch you do what you do. So, I am really stoked Thanks, that brother. you're here doing one of these with me. So, awesome. Um, so, uh, this week, um, we want to talk about some stuff here. I think you've got some good stuff to share with our folks. Yeah. So, talk to us a little bit about what you think we should do to suck less. Yeah. So, um, I was talking with you before we got started here about one of the things I do in my own dry fire practice. Uh, quite often I have multiple targets set up on the wall. Mm -hmm. And so I'm practicing transitions between targets. I often will say that target transitions are, are kind of the first step to shooting something that's moving because every time we have to shoot something that's moving, it's every time it's a new, it's, oh, a, new, sure. it's a new site acquisition mm -hmm. on a target, right? Yep. So target transitions is kind of where that starts. So that, that's where this starts for me is I'm doing a lot of dry fire on multiple targets. Uh, so I'm getting those, those multiple engagements, multiple site pictures, and it kind of forces you to reset and reacquire sites and, and do that repeatedly. Um, with more of my competitive shooting, it's obviously it's a lot of, you know, two on target, two on two, you know, very predictable in that way, but I do try to mix it up for the more defensive oriented training that I also do. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I that I do is, <clears throat> I'll actually get my gun out and just so everyone knows, we, we checked and made yep, these are clear you know, guns. I'll let you confirm yep. even. It's probably not that, that clean. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> I'm gonna wash my hands now. But uh, one of the things I do in dry fire is, it, you know, we, we focus a lot of times about getting that perfect trigger press. Yep. Right, and then we're resetting the gun, and we're practicing another good trigger press, and that's that's great for learning good mechanics of trigger presses. But you know, we can take it to another level, right? And something that's a little bit more applicable to being on the live range with, you know, whether we're doing a, a single target multiple shot drill or multiple targets multiple shots. Um, so a dry fire, a lot of times my focus is actually just acquiring targets and I'm working the trigger, and it's a dead trigger. Sure. Right, Machine. so I'm not getting the click. Yep. And, but that's okay, because there's still a lot we can learn from that. This is more of a diagnostic tool uh, rather than a trigger manipulation tool. I mean, we can learn some of things from, even about trigger manipulation, even when we have a dead trigger. Sure. It, those of you that are Glock shooters, where you, you press a Glock trigger once and dry fire, the, the trigger stuck to the rear. Yep. And then what? And, and, and people are like, well, I have to get my trigger to reset. The SIG trigger here resets, even though I don't get a click. Your Glock one does not. Guess what? You can still just manipulate this inside the trigger guard. Okay. Okay. And the idea is we're slamming into that trigger, even a dead trigger, using what we think is about the right amount of force that is typical when we're actually firing the gun. Okay. Because that's, that's the force that we are imparting into the gun through the trigger every time we fire and live fire. Okay, and so I do the best I can to manipulate that trigger and use the appropriate level of force. And then the rest of it is monitoring my sights. So, I mean, Neil, I'll ask you, so you're at, you're at the live range, you're shooting mm -hmm. your gun. Let's say, are you familiar with an El Prez? Yes. Right? Yep. Three targets, 10 yep. yards. You know, you have two shots, two shots, two shots, right? Reload, two shots, two shots, two shots. Uh, What's going, like, tell me what's going on with your sights or your dot when you're shooting something like an L-Prez. Um, on a good day, <laughs> what I'm seeing is, uh, you know, I'm focusing on the process. I'm focusing on the actual targets as I'm transitioning. And I see my dot on a good day bouncing up and down. 
um, if I don't see the dot bouncing up and down in the recoil, mm -hmm. uh, typically I go into you know the mode of figuring out what's going on. It's 99 out of 100 times it's my left hand, it's, and it's it's yeah. that grip. And so when I shoot the trigger, when I pull the trigger, the gun goes off, and I see chaos. I know I got a problem. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you know sometimes you don't feel that because you're coming out so quick, and also and and th so that dot moving around like that, the chaos tells me I've yep. I've got something to fix. Yep. Um, and sometimes you can fix it in mid drill. Uh, sometimes you got to slow down a little bit and, and reacquire. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, that's what I'm focusing on is what is that dot doing as I see it move from target to target. Right. So that this is, you're on the right path there talking about that as it connects to this dry fire drill. So a common thing I have set up is, is basically like an El Presidente drill on the wall with three targets. And I'm going to come out of the holster and go two, two, and two. And yeah, there's not a lot happening here as far as I'm not feeling the trigger like, you know, the, the, the typical feedback I get from a trigger. But the goal here is, is to get those targets, see my dot or my sights on those target for each of those two shots and manipulate the trigger in the manner that I typically would. And my goal is, this is a very process oriented uh, mode of dry fire. I, the whole goal is it's not about the target. It's not so much even about what I'm doing here. It's more about what am I actually seeing in my sights. Okay. In dry fire. Okay. So keep in mind, we're still imparting. Let's say your trigger is six, seven pounds, mm -hmm. five and a half, or you got a nice fancier one, four, four and a half, whatever it is. <clears throat> uh, if you're imparting six, seven pounds of force back into that trigger, okay. you know, live fire, dry fire, doesn't really matter. It's still going to result if it's a little bit less than perfect, we're gonna see some movement, okay? What this will usually tell us, just like when you're shooting an El Presidente and you're looking, you're, you're looking to see your dot, you're looking to get to target, and you see chaos as the gun is fired, and as you're trying to recover and get back on target, the chaos tells you what again? Most my, likely my something grip. going on with grip. <laughs> yep. Support hand grip. The same thing is true in dry fire. And the cool thing is I'll do something like this for even just five minutes. And in five minutes, it doesn't seem like a lot, but you start getting kind of fatigued. Yep. And that's when you start to see maybe some of these mistakes come out. And it's a, the, the feedback is, the goal here is what is coming back to me through my sight picture. Okay. So if I'm shooting a dot gun, I'm looking to see as minimal movement as I can. If there is movement, I want to see it to, I want it to be very consistent and more of a slight up and down. Mm -hmm. Right. If it's a little bit more chaotic and it's bouncing around, grip. It's my grip. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're shooting iron sights, same thing is true. It's just it's a little bit more difficult to see because the red dot we get very very good feedback instantaneously through that dot. But in the irons, we just have to be a little bit more in tune with where's my front sight in relation to that rear notch, right? And how is it moving in relation? And I, you know the thing we always talk about in dry fire is you got to be brutally honest. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so if it, if you have to say to yourself, oh, I don't think it was that bad, it probably was. Mm -hmm. You know, it's probably something worth worth working on. Doesn't mean that you suck. It means that you can suck less yep. is, what, is, is the That's whole right. point of it. If we're brutally honest. Now, if I pull mine out there and that thing isn't moving at all and I'm limp wristing it and everything and, uh, and doing it to where at the end of five minutes, I'm not a little fatigued, probably didn't really get a lot out of that because I can pull my gun out and hold it really nice and still. I can get a 99 with a Mantis. I can mm -hmm. grab the LASR and shoot very well with that. I can do everything that I want to, but if I'm not a little fatigued at the end of my dry fire, that doesn't translate to live fire. Cause in live right. fire, all of a sudden now my brain knows there's going to be an explosion. So now I'm really gripping into that thing differently. So yeah. the big thing I always think uh, and talk about with folks is when we're doing dry fires, really get that grip, like that thing's going to go off and then do your work. And then if you're brutally honest, you're going to see some stuff. So yeah, and the honesty yeah. is really key. Yep. Uh, and that's why I say that the focus here is what I see, not what so much I'm doing. Yep. So as you get a little bit better and more practice at doing this in dry fire, uh, eventually as you get to where that dot or those sights move very little, and, and a lot of it is too, we want good trigger manipulations. Uh, if we see things, you know, going off at an angle or something, then, you know, it's an indicator there's still some, some work to do here. There's also, you know, this is a yep. tandem thing. Yep. This guy works together with this. Most of the time, our failures are in a failure to actually get a good support hand grip. This, this is the guy that's doing the work of, 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 of I mean, the right. recoil control is this guy, this, right? Yeah. And so, uh, but the better we get with this and the better we get to, or once we start seeing very little movement in our sights and very little movement in our dot, 
then I start transitioning more into, for me at that point, it's more of a vision uh, awareness type drill. I'm making sure that I can see more and more and more in my environment as I'm running that gun, because the more I can see, the more I can do, the faster and the more smooth my transitions are gonna be. So as I'm looking at one target in an El Presidente, I'm seeing all three targets, okay? All three are there. I already know exactly where I'm going next. Oh, see, okay. So in yep. dry fire, it's really easy to get sucked into the yep. sights. Yeah. And that's like all the focus. So at first, I mean, we're, that's what we're basically talking about here. Watch that, learn from that, see what the yep. feedback of the sights is. But then we have to start moving out of that because we don't want to be so... It, sucked into the site that we start not seeing other right. important things in the process. You know, I, uh, I think it was Scott Jelinski's class that he, he was talking to me specifically and a few other students uh, that we were so sucked into the, into the actual dot that we were losing focus on everything behind it. Yep, it's oh, so true. And, it yeah, absolutely and happens. Like, oh, and yeah. it happens with dot shooters, it happens with iron shooters as well. Because yep. what do we teach people from like day one, yes. like old school is yes. front sight focus. Yep. Stare at that front sight. Right? Yep. And then everything else kind of disappears because all of our focus and attention is on that yep. front side. And, and traditionally, dry fire has been press out, stare at that side, stare at that side, stare at that side, and just, and, and, and that's where you start, right? That's really where you got to start is get this part figured out to where you can pull that trigger without moving it. But this is, in my opinion, this is even more important, that support hand. Because if I've got that support hand doing what it needs to do, I don't know, this doesn't mm -hmm. really matter as much. So It, it, it doesn't. Yep. That's why they work in tandem. Yep. We, we, the thing is, when we're shooting very precisely, very accurately, Accurately, this really needs to be dialed in yep right but when we're going fast we're gonna give up some of that preciseness in the trigger press and we're gonna compensate for that in grip yep that's the way it works if the gun is on target the moment the trigger is pressed we're gonna hit it as I, simple as absolutely that. absolutely the, so, the gun's gonna go where it's gonna go you know that that's yep. that's what this is all about is Sight on target, sight on target, sight on target. Monitor it through that whole process. Do those trigger presses and be somewhat aggressive with it. Because if you go slow with this, you're not gonna get a lot. It's when we start really being aggressive, that's when we're gonna get the feedback. That's when we're gonna start seeing the chaotic movements, the, yep. the jerks and that kind of stuff. And it's gonna cost you about five minutes a day to do this. Mm -hmm. so, so the assignment for this week, uh, for those of you that are following along at home, is go clear your gun, get in your dry fire dojo, get yourself three targets, and I don't care what style they are. I like small little tiny targets as I'm in dry fire because my room isn't that long. Um, but uh, draw your gun, two trigger presses there, two there, two there, holster back up and just do that again. Do that for about five minutes. And if, if in five minutes you aren't feeling some fatigue in your hands, chances are you're, you're not gripping the way that you need to be. That's right. All right, well, hey, thanks a lot, bro. Yeah, I really appreciate it.